how's everyone doing tonight? Should have asked that first, but there you are. I uh, didn't intend for how's everyone doing tonight to be the opening phrase of the show originally. But when you click launch, it um, often take like when you click go live, it doesn't go live right away. It takes uh, like 20, 30 seconds. And um, so then I later go back in, you know, usually a day or two later when you're allowed to edit the video on YouTube and I'll take out those like 20 or 40 seconds when it's not really when it's like live, but I don't know yet. And I just found that I usually start with the phrase, how's everyone doing tonight? So sort of unintentional opening line of the show. And I recognize it because I keep editing the videos. So, but I like it. I mean, it's a nice chat worthy uh, way to start. So before I start with the puzzle, let me show you this thing that showed up today. It's actually a really cool thing. Although I'm not sure if you can see it on that black uh, surface. So the same way we have uh, the measuring, it's basically, it's a tiny guitar. But it had the fret, what looks like a fretboard is actually a ruler. There's other markings on it for different size, like nuts and bolts. The headstock has a screwdriver, uh, like a Phillips head, I think. And then there's a flat head down here. There's like a bottle opener here. I, I'm thinking I might use it. You know how I, I should have had this box open already because there's the tool that comes with the um, with the model. And I'm not saying this will replace. The, <laughs> excuse me. I'm not saying this will replace that tool um, because it might snap the pieces of wood when I pop them out like maybe metal versus wood it's like you know too strong i gotta say you know let's try it and see what happens um i don't know we don't know until we try anyway you can see it there oh and this box we got yesterday it's just like uh when we're doing something repetitive we we grab one of these and uh and chew on it so <laughs> can you see this question already so like for example we're about to take everything out of the box that'll take a minute so we can work on this question could your smartphone get you to the moon um certainly there's more um your smartphone certainly has you know many times more commuting power than um anything the that was on board an Apollo program vehicle craft ship whatever lander they got to the moon of course it's the lander is just the last phase but rocket ship or spaceship or whatever you want to call it um yeah so you've got a lot more processing power on your phone I'm not sure if that's what they're referring to just the processing power Oh, and the reason I don't need the um, instruction booklet that came with the um, in the box is because I've got it the PDF loaded here. So we'll use that. That'll be our instruction booklet. And I'll just say hi, you know, while I'm here. Uh, all right. So, yeah, the moon. Kind of remarkable, right? Like, um, what does it take to get to the moon? Uh, obviously not too much processing power. <laughs> if you've got a hundred times more in your phone, uh, than what they took with them to the moon. So it's obviously not big on processing power. It's big on rocket fuel. Uh, you know, there's some, it's interesting. Um, I felt like it was a sellout recently. I shouldn't say that, but recently at the NCAA tournament, they had the NASA Gemini astronauts on hand, and they were, like, waving to people and stuff. Um, I don't know what I think about the current state of astronauts. I think I have a more respect for Neil Armstrong. Um, the current astronauts, I don't know. You hear a lot of stuff. Um, the critical 
the investigative and critical analysis skills are a lot more than they were back then. Uh, which, um, so these cards, you know, it's occurred to me that, oh, wow, you can actually read that card from here. Well, depending what device you're looking at it on. But my, like, what is this, like a 12, 13-inch monitor? Uh, I can read this card on the, on the monitor that I'm looking at. So that's amazing. Uh, anyway... Neil Armstrong didn't like to talk about the moon, the lunar landings. And, uh, you know, if you ever watch the video of him afterwards, you know, it's quite a thing. He doesn't look like happy at all. When he first landed, when he first got back. But nowadays, I think everyone knows what's going on. Um... So, for example, I don't know how, this question, you know, it's like, I don't think they were asking for so much, but it's just leading me. Um, some of the things you'll hear um, is that NASA is the largest, NASA is the largest um, purchaser of helium in the world. I don't know if that's true, but I heard it said. Um, but even if they're just a very large consumer of helium, uh, is, is that used, how is that used in rockets? Uh, I don't know. Hey, you know what? I, I'm not really prepared to go down this path. Um, I'll just give you one fact and this is not even have anything to do with NASA. This is more like an earth shape fact. Um, when they show the path of the ISS, it's like this like sine curve like when they show it on a like square map but when they show it on a round map like they have at the UN it's a circle you can do that you can do that you can go look at the um, like when you're on a flight um, you know you're on the plane and they show you this like square map of the earth uh, and they'll show you your plane and it'll you know if you're going like overseas it'll like go up like this and then come down like this and you'll think like why do they do that like why did they go like up to the north pole to come back down to england like why like why did they do that um <clears throat> but then you look at the un map or the map that uh, some of the other maps that are out there there's like a map for the ships of the world there's a map for the planes like i forget what they're called but like the nautical society and the aerospace society anyway all these societies use the same map as the un and when you look at the flight path on the round map it's basically a straight line so that like u-shaped thing is a straight line and the isis uh is not isis the iss parabolic curve when you look at it on the round map it's a circle it's like a perfect circle. So I'm not going to go too far into that. We've already got our model board out. Maybe some other night. Uh, I seriously doubt that's the answer that they were looking for. <laughs> Let's see what they what answer they wanted. Um, an iPhone 6 has the computing power to guide 120 million Apollo missions to the moon all at the same time. So by all means... With the right software, your smartphone could get you there, but you would still need a spaceship. But would you need a spaceship? Uh, I'll tell you why I say that. And this is another thing like that shape, shape of the earth type of thing. Um, video game people, when they started rendering, um, when they tried to render the curvature of the earth using the calculations that they've been given, um, what they would build would look insane. So they would render it um, at sea level. They would render everything flat, like sea. You know, sea is flat. And then if the person takes the plane or the spaceship and they look down, then they would show everything curved, uh, which is what we see. I mean, you're on a ship and you look out, everything looks flat. If you're on the beach and you look out, everything looks flat. But then if you go up in, I don't know, a spaceship or whatever, I guess it looks curved. 
and here and that's my other point is um about the phone taking you to the moon like i you know i thought about that before i turned the card like um it's got the computing power but you still need a spaceship but really you don't um <laughs> really you don't um it's a huge topic so let me uh start building the model and then I'll get into why the iPhone can get you to the moon without a spaceship. But let's first, you know, put our feet on the ground for a second. Uh, take a look at our, our model. So, all right, there you go. We've uh, somewhat building this stream cabriolet. There's the engine. There's, um, there's the fiction engine. There's the uh, mechanical engine. I say fiction engine, the model engine. This is the... The engine, where the engine would be in the Dream Cabriolet. This, presumably, is the engine of this actual model that will actually make it move in reality. And there you see some energy stored in Twisted Springs. So I assume that that's the engine. And I assume that you're going to wind it up from back here. There's another gear back there. Anyway, our instruction says we were on page 33. Uh, so, yeah page 33 um there's no pieces being added in page 33 uh i don't know in fact it's going to take me a minute to figure out what they're even doing on page 33 i don't even know what i'm looking at right now is that the yeah that's that little knob yeah okay uh so this little knobby thing here there's springs that come out and they hook to the floorboards. It looks like they're trying to tell us these aren't going to hook to the floorboards for much longer. Uh, I think we're going to take them out and they're going to go somewhere else. So let's try to figure this out. All right, so I think they're saying to unhook these two rubber bands, but I'm not going to do it yet. And then what are they saying? What are they doing with these rubber bands? I'm looking at the picture, but it doesn't make any sense. Um, all right, let's go to the third picture. They're still not quite hooked to... Oh, now they're cutting them. Well, why were these rubber bands sitting here all this time if we're just going to cut them? <laughs> Can someone answer me that? Um, why do we have them here if we're just going to cut them? All right. So, presumably we're going to cut them. All right, let's see what number four is. And now, we're going to hook them. Uh, okay. I don't know if you even can see that. So, there's pieces stacked there. And there's a little slit in those pieces. You can probably see it there. I'm not sure how I can point it out. Oh, let's use this new little guitar thing we got. So there's a little slit there. That's where the rubber band's going to go. So we're going to cut it and we're going to put it in there. Um, the weird thing is that they want us to use both rubber bands because there's like two of them here, two sets. I'm not sure how to do that. I'm not starting any of this until I fully understand it. So I have to keep reading the instructions. All right. And then they're showing the other side. So that's the end. Um, one side you cut and you hook to here. And, uh, and then you get a check mark. All right, there's the check mark on four. And then on five, okay, I think you do the same thing on five and you get another check mark. So they want it on both sides. What I'm confused about is if you cut both of them, how is it that they're both going, are they both going through here? I have to review this whole set of instructions again. Okay. So, grab the two rubber bands. 
sort of fold them. I don't know. Too, there's nothing really going on in instruction two. Oh, oh no. Instruction two. Are they both going into that slit? Is that what's going on there? I can't really see. It doesn't look like they're in there yet. All right, let's see what's next. All right. Okay, it does look like they're being cut, like they're in there when they're being cut. You can see a little yellow in the in between the wood there. So it does look like they're being cut after they're fed through. Yeah. So they're being cut. And then what happens? Then we get the check mark. So that's what it looks like. It's a little crisscross pattern. They got one knot on top, one knot on bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what's going on here. I think because there's a knot in the middle. And I think they're just putting one on top, one on bottom, and then just cutting them. That's the plan. So let me look at it again with that understanding. All right, doesn't show it through yet, but when they cut it, it does. Yeah, yeah, that's what's going on here. So we got to take each rubber band. They have little knots on them. You have to feed them through there. I don't think that's going to be easy, and then you have to cut it. It's not going to be easy because it's already a difficult thing to do, and then I got to do it in a position where I can't fit my fingers. And if I use the needle nose pliers, I'm going to risk tearing the rubber band. Anyway, <laughs> let's try to get one of them in there. And I also have to get like, oh, actually, this may not be difficult at all. Let me see here. I have to get the rubber band open. That's the tricky part. But once you get it open, yeah, maybe I can like use this stick to open it. Like once you get it open, you should be able to squeeze through there. Anyway, I got to do this for four rubber bands. So I probably do have more time to talk about those, uh, the phone the phone getting you to the moon. So, you ready? You ready for this? It's going to sound like simulation theory, but it's not simulation theory. It's consciousness theory, and it's immaterialism. So, materialism would say, and even simulation theory, which I think this is why they're pushing simulation theory next, because... Uh, with simulation theory, you can have sort of materialism. It's just that it's materialism tracked by a computer. But you can still kind of use all the rules of materialism. You just add a... Uh, by the way, I got one of them in there. You just add a, a sort of um, simulation um, layer. In fact, you don't even add much. Because if the simulation is complete, meaning it's like down to the quarks or whatever, then you you really aren't adding much. Uh, you really aren't saying much to say that it's a simulation. It's almost just like theoretical at that point. I mean, if you're if you've got all the rules of phys physics and you've got all the quarks and whatever, then it doesn't even need to be simulation theory. It could be, you know what I mean? Like, it's basically reality at that point. You can fly, you can fly to the moon, and you've got to use gas, same as if you weren't in simulation theory. Now, if you did use simulation theory, you could then do some crazy stuff, like 
and maybe this is where it's going, but like someone could start claiming that they've got the cheat codes and they could basically, you know, perform miracles because they've got the cheat codes. So that could be one way that you can go with simulation theory, but I don't think that's where people are going with it. I think they're really just doing the uh, saving materialism by calling it a simulation. All right, so materialism is, you know, quarks and electrons and chemistry and physics and everything that we know about the world. Immaterialism is consciousness. And consciousness is a render. And some, th some people say that it's uh, just purely a thought thing. Like, you know, it's like the God consciousness and stuff like that. I don't think so. I think it's a conscious, my personal feeling is that it's a conscious render of, I'm going to go back to material, is a conscious render of a material stream. And I personally view that stream as a song. So it's like a song is playing on a jukebox and it keeps playing. And, you know, it, it just keeps replaying. <laughs> so, and in those, but it's a really uh, rich song. And there's room for basically everybody to not only simulate physics and render physics, but to render whatever they want. Um, because the render is the consciousness. So, for example, if you, you, if you play like some old school video game, depending with, whether you use the RCA cables or the HDMI cables, it's going to look different. If you play a current like computer video game whether you play it on a, a monitor and a graphics card that could do certain resolution and fps versus one that can't it's going to look different um those are the easy to understand concepts i actually think there's a much more i'm actually having trouble with this fourth rubber band i got three of them on good so anyway there's a much more complex layer and that's uh, where all the chicanery goes on, in my opinion. And that's the sort of interpretation of the song, which again, and we're calling a render. But it's not just a render of frames per second. It's an entirely different render. It's like in one render, um, in one person's render, but that person can be influenced by all the other people and them repeating what they're seeing in their renders and what they learned, you know, and what their parents told them. So anyway, one person could see a volcano where another person could see a dragon. That may not be the best example. Maybe one person could see a jet engine where another person could see a dragon. Something more like that. Um, and this theory... I mean, I personally think it's better than either material or um, simulation. And material and simulation, they're really the same thing. Just one has, like, potential to activate God mode and the other doesn't. I actually would be more scared of the version where people can simulate, claim, you know, to simulate God mode. Because um, that just leads to more nonsense and i noticed that there's a a push i don't want to say where it's from that i don't want to sound too crazy but there's like videos telling people that if they believe in these renders or if they believe that they can control their render however you know minusculely they'll oh man i pulled this rubber band off they'll describe that as the person being schizophrenic. It'll be like, if you don't see what we see, you're schizophrenic. So if they see a, a dragon, or let's say they see a jet engine and you see a dragon, then you're schizophrenic. 
you know, and if you're schizophrenic, then you can be locked up against your will. So, no small thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting, this world that we live in. Um, I mean, we're all here. Thanks for that. Uh, Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. I don't think he ever got past that. Um, I have. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that I know everything, um, but I'm willing to, to go along with it. I mean, whatever it is, you know, if, it's, if you say it's material, then maybe it's material. If you say it's simulation, maybe it's simulation. If I say it's, uh, if you say it's consciousness, maybe it's consciousness. If I say it's a conscious render, render of a material stream that keeps replaying, well, that's my theory. <laughs> you know, you don't have to believe it, but uh, I like it. It fits to me. I feel like it's about right. I, and I think, um, you know how many ideas there are in philosophy books? Like, it used to be anyone could write anything they wanted in a philosophy book. Nowadays, it's like if you don't believe that standing six feet away from someone prevents transmission of viral disease, then you're like a heretic of science. We live in a strange days. <laughs> All right, so we're 27 minutes into the stream. And we did advance. We're now on page 34. But all we did was move four rubber bands. In 27 minutes, all we did was move four rubber bands. Um, let's hope something something more happens on the next page. All right, so now we're on page 34. That involves sheets four and five. And the first thing we got to do is cut a bunch of uh, five 2Z sections of toothpick. 2Z is the smallest section. It's like, um, am I the only one that's like tired of cutting toothpicks? I mean, what are they doing to us? <laughs> All right. Uh, I just uh, want to say that I'm happy to to do this puzzle. I just feel bad that we're spending our time on the stream like cutting toothpicks. Well, I guess it gives us, while we're cutting five toothpicks, I guess it gives us more time to to answer these question questions. Oh, wait a second. Did we even answer the previous question? Did we ever read their answer? Could you could a smartphone get to them? Oh, okay, that was still that question. Okay. All right, the next question. What is the hardiest animal on Earth? Um, well, what do they mean by hardiest? Are we talking about... Um, the um <laughs> I forgot his name already. <laughs> that little thing that looks like a skunk with like the white like skull cap and the small body. Uh why do I feel like there's the word bear in his uh name? What's the name of that thing? It's like something don't mess around, honey badger don't mess around, or something like that. I heard that there's some uh, like aquatic version of a honey badger. I think it was like a river otter or something like that. And I heard it was like s just as insane as the honey badger, but in, in water. <laughs> the water version of the honey badger. So anyway, um, the honey badger is the hardiest in terms of combat that I've seen. Uh, he can survive a lot. I think a camel is the hardiest in terms of being exposed to nature. I don't think that a um, honey badger would survive nature better than uh, a camel. Um, but that's only certain types. Like camels do well in um, dry environments. Alligators do well in more environments than that because alligators can, like, completely shut down their system. Like, I've seen pictures of alligators, like, 
frozen with their snouts above the ice and they're planning to like ride out the winter like that by the way i don't know where this toothpick just traveled to you might have seen it fly off the screen i heard it bounce off a couple of things and then i just turned to my right and it was sitting on my desk i don't know what it bounced off of hopefully it didn't break any of these like cameras that are pointing at at my desk um so an alligator is quite hardy in, in that sense it can like go without food uh if it's in a desert situation it can like burrow into the sand if it's in a frozen situation it could it could literally freeze it's like a cold-blooded thing and it could like just sit there frozen for months so it can go without food it can go in extreme conditions um there are things that can kill alligators but it, it is generally pretty tough um it's also been around uh for a long time it's been around from like dinosaur days and i think one definition of hardy should include things that could um, withstand. Uh, I want to point out something really quickly about the scoreboard. We just turned to page 34. Before that, we were on page 33. So we're at 333 three, three pieces on page 34. <laughs> if only we had calculated the pieces before the page, uh, we would have five threes in a row. Well, anyway, four out of five three is still pretty cool. So alligator, I, I think, is quite hardy. There are other hardy uh, animals out there. For example, the water bear has information age error correction software in its genes such that it could be float through space and get irradiated and then go back on a planet, get some water poured on it, and it re refigures out what its DNA is supposed to be. It sort of gets it back to where it's supposed to be. So it can travel through space. So you can like uh, have theory of evolution, like panspermia across planets via water bears. You could have that, and then that certainly would meet some definition of being hardy. All right, but that's not the only one. There's there's still more uh, animals that can claim like some crazy things. I think humans should not be counted out, although they might not be able to live like in a forest uh, by themselves. Uh, and even that's not fair. What I just said. All right, let's try this uh, metal thing. Let's try to pop out this circle with the metal thing instead of the wood. So, like, a human naked is kind of weak. But a human that uses tools is kind of strong. So, the humans could be very hardy if you allow them to, to take everything, you know, that they really can do and not just, like, you know... Not just like walking naked through the desert. Yeah, walking naked through the desert, human is like pretty useless. But humans aren't walking naked through the desert. They're using their intellect to go to space, to deep sea dive. They've got CRISPR that can edit genes. I mean, everything that these other animals can do, uh, potentially, you know, like... Um, naturally from nature humans can do using technology or using tools to put it in like base terms i'm looking for pieces 130 and 131 and uh i'm not seeing them so far just give me a second here maybe they're on page five not page four This is annoying. I'm being slowed by not finding pieces. All right, there. there's 130. I found 130. And where's 131? There's 130. Might need to be sanded. 130. No, 32. I don't need 131. I, 
That's actually 33. No, it's not 33. It's 130, but it says 33 on it. And 131 is going to say 32 on it. There's actually multiple of this piece, by the way. All right. So one thir there's 130, there's 133. 131, you figure is around here somewhere, right? Okay. There's one. There's 131, it says 32 on it. There's 161, it also says 32 on it. And it looks like sort of they're like right and left of each other. They're like similar. They're mirror images. They're mirror image pieces. All right. Anyway, let's start putting this stuff together. So... We got these five, five Z's. Oh, the the answer. Okay, let's see. Uh, so let's see what this card deck says. Wow, there's a lot going on there. A tardigrade water bear, a micro animal, 0 0.05 inches long. They survive temperatures from plus 300 to negative 458. Pressures greater than those found at the bottom of the sea. They go without food and water for 30 years and endure radiation that would fry people. Who said small can't be tough? All right, so water bears. Their answer was water bears. I don't know why I thought they were going to go with uh, honey badgers. I guess you have to know. I guess we have to get a feel for this deck as you we like go through it, like what type of answers they're looking for. So um, there's like, it's like a Target logo on one side. On the other side, it's just a circle. So I'm going to put the, the the toothpick in the other side because that's what the instructions do. Um, although I don't really know how far we're pushing it in yet. So the instructions may not, it may not really mean it much, which side you put it in first. Uh, all right, so I put it flush. And now the next piece, all right, so the 33 is going to be facing the same... <laughs> <laughs> this rolled off the table, but it landed on my leg, so I still got it. So the 33 is facing the same direction as the Target logo, and the stick goes through the top. All right, so there we go. We did it. All right, what's next? All right, now we put two sticks in the back of this and then pop the 32 piece on back. By the way, this isn't a splinter on the 30. That's... That's an actual, like, piece. That, that bump is supposed to be there. Don't sand that off. All right. All right, so these two each get a stick. These two back here. These two holes get a stick, and then we attach this on. So water bears... Did we say what we said water bears, but I don't think we ever gave like an actual answer. Like this is our answer. I listed a bunch of different things and honey, uh, water bears was one of them. Camels, alligators, although maybe I meant crocodiles, honey badgers, camels, water bears, crocodiles. Did we say anything else? Oh, we said humans. I think I still would go with the answer of humans. Uh, yes, water bear. I mean, the problem is that hardy isn't a very specific term. So it's kind of like the question is answering, like, read my mind, you know? Like, who's the hardiest species, you know? I mean, it's it's up for debate. It's uh, And part of the debate is your definition of the term hardy. So I don't think anyone can really reliably get that question right. Or wrong. Oh, right now I can't even get this toothpick in. I'm gonna use the needle nose pliers. A little get a little assistance there. Twist it. Twisting often helps. Hmm. You know, it's good that I'm bad at this puzzle puzzling with model building. 
Because if I was good at it, I would say like, oh, just do this. <laughs> and then you would be like, what? How am I supposed to do that? But because I'm so bad at it, um, I struggle with it. And in my struggle, you probably get to learn how I do it. So yeah, I held it. I held this toothpick and the needle nose pliers and I twisted it until it went in. So now with this like this, I'm going to put the 32. So you're not going to see the 32 anymore because it's going to go back to back with the 33. But they are going both the same direction. It's the absence of the 32 on the back. That's what you're going to see. Uh, all right. So we built something here. Some little, some little gadget has now been built. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, next is we'll check, uh, check our work. All right, let's check our work here. Uh, yeah, it looks about right. Okay. Next, uh, three pieces. Uh, what? Well, no, actually, one of them is this piece. So we're adding two new pieces: one thirty-two and one thirty-three. So 132 and 133, this should be on the same board. So I think 133, is this one? It's Why does it say 298? Anyway, no, 133 is this piece. All right. So this is 133. Uh, and then 132 has got to be this piece. All right. Should we use the wooden or the metal to pop out 133? 133, yep. Wow, that metal was way too strong. I'm using the wood next time. I'm lucky nothing broke. Or actually, you know what? Let's use the metal until we break something. Maybe it feels powerful, but it's safe. Or maybe we're going to break the next piece we attempt to use it on. Let's attempt it on 132. Let's we'll see what happens, right? I just feel like that first piece popped out like so much that I think that this uh, metal is uh, too strong. Yeah, it's going to bend this piece if I... This is eventually going to break a piece using the metal. It's because like once it starts going, there's like no stopping it. The wood is not going to stop it. The wood is going to snap in half. All right, this is a tricky piece to get out, but we got it, 132. Oh my goodness, I just snapped whatever these two pieces are out. They look like two pieces labeled 151. Luckily, they're very recognizable pieces. They say U-Gears V models on them, so we're not going to have to look too hard for those that's not going to be a big problem that those popped out early we'll remember them all right uh, this piece looks like it needs a little sanding this 132 all right the uh 133 could also use a little sanding all right now this piece that we already built is going to go through both of them so for 132 We've got um, this slit on this side and this square. No, not this square. This square, the top, the last square. That's where this goes through, the last square. All right, let's get that in there. actually not going in um, I gotta wiggle it a little bit to get it started you can't use force until you've got it started otherwise you break the piece that's like a, a rule here by the way we still have two toothpicks we didn't use not sure what's going on with that probably gonna do some other side thing what do you think should I sand that it's not going in. That's why I'm asking that question. All right. Oh, it broke. It broke off. It's like it didn't go in, but it broke off. That's tricky. 
part of this piece broke off inside of here. And I don't know if I should smash it in next to it or knock it out and try again. That's a problem. If I pull it out, it could end up too loose. I can't even get this thing out. How do we get it in there? It's like it definitely broke off from this piece because you can see that it's chipped. It's chipped badly, but it's going to go in further than that. So it's not going to be a big deal. All right, we got the piece out. Did we? It looks like it's out from one side, not from the other. Uh, all right. Yeah, piece is it's not coming out. Get some metal in there. All right, it's out. Yep, yeah, we're good now. All right, but what we don't know is if this is going to fit in there. Because it wasn't before. As you see, it was breaking. All right, so we're going to sand it a little bit. Not too much, or it's going to be loose, but just a little bit. Just a little sand, a little wax, and we're going to try again to get it in there. All right. Uh, it feels like it's going better this time. It's kind of stuck, though. Uh, I hear it. It's going in. I hear it. Wow. Uh, it's not completely in. It's a little bit sticking out still. You can see there. It's a little bit sticking out. i got to keep trying to get that in. Come on. Um, it has to go through a second piece. And that flake off could cause it to not grip the second piece. It's like it didn't flake completely. You can see back here. At the very back, it's still at the full width. But I don't know if that's enough to hold this piece on. All right, so this piece go. Maybe there'll be a second connector through here or through the toothpick. Anyway, I don't think it's going to be a very strong connection through here. But hopefully there's going to be more connections. Uh, yeah, like through here, for example, there should be another connection, hopefully. So for now, we're just going to push it on and hope for the best. It went on so easy because that piece is flaked. It goes on easy. It's going to come off easy, meaning when it's not supposed to. All right, that's the top row of page 34. Wow, what is going on here? Um, are you seeing this? <laughs> what is going on here? So it says 134 through 148. So that's like 15 pieces. And what do we do with these 15 pieces? They're all labeled. Oh my goodness. 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 3. All right, then 34 through 41. I don't understand what's going on. All right. Um, only two of them have arrows and the two that have arrows are 48, which goes here at this opening and then 41, which goes here. Hopefully there's a pattern to the, to the rest of what's going on here. Um, all right. So that's 15 pieces anyway. For the, at least that's something. By the way, they updated this, um, like for the second night in a row, they updated this YOLO box, but they didn't call it 
a firmware update that just like um they just updated it without like telling I don't know what's the word without like um without it being an official update I just turned it on and um and it updated and one of the things is that when you click in the box for the uh, scoreboard, you get a cursor. But there's no keyboard on the Yolo box. It's a touch screen. The keyboard has to pop up, you know, like on an iPad. But the fact that it's there makes me wonder if they also added a Bluetooth keyboard because what would be the point of a cursor if you can't type? And in fact, looking at the top of it, there is a new like thing. Like I don't think I can show you unless I pick up the iPad and use it as a handy cam, but there's a new icon near the battery. And I'm not gonna play with it right now, but probably after the stream I'll play with it and I'll let you know tomorrow. Anyway, for now, let's grab those fifteen pieces. I guess are they these pieces here? There's a lot of pieces here. Um 134 through 1 134 through 138 so these pieces all have numbers on them and the pieces I'm looking for all have numbers but the numbers I'm looking for go from 34 to 48 they're basically the same numbers but without the one so I don't think they're here uh, let's see where are they um, yeah, that's weird. Okay, they're on board five. Yeah, all right, so that's board four. So this should be board five, right? All right, 134. 134 through 148. Are there going to be two of these? There's multiples of these pieces. All right, it's going to take me a minute just to pop all these pieces out. I'm going to use the metal one. All right, so I'm just going to grab one of each for now. 34. Oh, we definitely need a question. <laughs> While I'm popping out 14 pieces. We definitely need to be thinking about a question. All right. Are molecules very small? I mean, this is a very subjective question. You see what I mean about this This set? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just haven't got a question set yet from these, like, boxes to review that I'm, like, totally happy with. I mean, that's a subjective question. Are, there, are molecules small? Um my tendency is to think that it's like a trick question and they wanted me to say that molecules are big by the way one of these 34s was not the correct one that was labeled 162 i'm going to put that back in we need a different 34. it's a it says 34 on it but it's really like 134 anyway i don't think it's possible to mess up but let me just grab the right one all right, so 134, 135, 136. All right, so are molecules small? Well, they're small compared to elephants. Uh, they're probably huge compared to electrons. Um, let's compare them to electrons. <laughs> just because they're, it's not just that they're bigger in size, it's that they're much more complex um, and there's something meaningful there. I don't know. Meaningful is kind of a vague term. Um, if an electron is a passenger in a car, then a molecule... Wait a minute. Am I confusing molecules with cells? All right. So maybe it's like an electron is a passenger in a car and a molecule is the car and a cell is the city. That might be what I'm thinking of because molecules are more, they're not, they're not elements. Um, 
You know, I'm not up on my chemistry enough to, like, answer these questions, really. All right. Let's read the answer and go on to the next one. I, I mean, I wish my chemistry was better, but it's not at this point. All right. When you are walking in the rain, just 10 drops will contain as many molecules as there are stars in the universe. Um, so the molecules are small. So really, they just wanted to give that example, but they never really said if they're big or small. All right. If the age of the Earth were represented by the length of a football field, how far would running back, ha how far would a running back have to run from his own goal line to reach the yard line when the man first appeared? I can't follow. I didn't follow the question. If the age of the Earth was represented by the length of a football field, okay, age of the Earth, length of a football field. Excuse me. And uh, why is it a running back? I feel like it should be a punt returner but or a kickoff returner. All right. If the age of the earth was represented by the length of a football field, how far would a running back have to run from his own goal line to reach the yard line when the man first appeared? Oh, when man first appeared. She's talking about, like, evolution. This is just a question, like, what do you know about the theory of evolution? Well... Uh, I mean, obviously, it would be the one-yard line on the ob the other side of the field. To get more precise than that, I'm not really sure. I think they say it's like Earth is 4 billion years old and man showed up somewhere around, let's say, 300K years ago, though some people say 2 million. But anyway, either way you look at it, it's the last yard. Um, but again, that's if you buy you know, the sort of modern, that's the problem with this deck. It's like you either buy everything they put in the textbooks or you're like a conspiracy theorist. We like don't live in the age of like reason anymore. We live in the age of rote. It's like check your critical thinking skills at the door. All we're doing these days is regurgitation. So Using the laws of regurgitation, uh, it's the one-yard line on the opposite side of the field. All right, let's see what the answer is. Over 99 yards, 2 feet, 11 inches. So basically, it's like the last inch. It's not. It's beyond 99 yards, which is what I was kind of saying. I probably should have went the extra mile and said it was the last inch. Um, all right, man does not appear until the ball carrier reaches within less than an inch of scoring a touchdown. Dinosaurs only appear after running 95 yards, though they get there sooner, um, though they get there a lot sooner. I, I don't know what that means, they get there a lot sooner. What is a lot, like an inch? I mean, are you sticking with this analogy or not? All right, so anyway, let me just continue popping these pieces out while I talk about... Um, there's a lot of different theories about the age of the earth. Um, there's ones who say it's longer. There's ones who say it's shorter. Uh, so anyway, somehow, young earth theory, have you ever heard that phrase? That's associated with religion um, because people are like, you know, I think one of the websites who does it is Answers in Genesis, AIG. So obviously they're taking their, you know, they're giving credit to religion. But I think there's a lot of other people who don't buy that, like, evolution fully took place during the four million years that Earth, whatever. I don't know, the first microbial, like, Earth formed from some molten rock and then there was, like, an acid pool and lightning hit it and... You had abiogenesis, and somehow that created something that not only was alive, but that could reproduce, and that could refuel, and that could do all these things. It's like, it, it's really crazy uh, what you expect from that first living cell, but then it also has to, like, reproduce and and evolve into everything else we see. I think... 
what's more likely is um, something like that movie. What was the name of that movie? It was supposed to be related to the um, Alien series. And it's like the guy shows up on Earth and he drinks some potion. And after he drinks this potion, he like turns into cells and those cells like, um, I don't know, they kickstart the evolution on Earth. I do think that, um, I mean, if, okay, so everyone believes in the sort of evolution where animals can adapt to the environment, like, like, for example, at the North Pole, there's some birds that are not penguins but look like penguins because that's the that's what's optimal for that area. So everyone believes in that sort of evolution. But if you believe in the evolution of, a, you know, the cells forming into um, everything that's on our planet, lions and tigers and bears and humans and plants and everything, um, then um, I actually think that that one is a stronger... Because people act like the argument for God is like God created the heavens and the earth in seven days or something like that. And I actually think that the the evolution is the stronger argument because if you're saying that there's this one cell that's going to unfold over millions of years to create everything that you see on this world, all the different plants and animal species and everything, I mean... That sounds like more like design to me. I mean, doesn't it? It's like that's like when you plant the seed and it turns into a tree. It doesn't seem like. I'll tell you how you would test that theory. If you went to another planet and all the same creatures evolved. If you go to another planet and everything looks completely different and you don't recognize it. Then you could say, oh, wow, yeah, okay, I guess evolution really is that random. But if you go to another planet and they've all, they're have all they all following the same sort of build with some modifications, then you're either looking at panspermia or, or some type of, um, you know, it's like baked in. It's like that evolution was always going to happen. From when you got that first cell showed up, there was like no stopping um, evolution from unfolding. Unfolding versus, you know, a shot in the dark. Yeah, I mean, it's officially you're considered like crazy or, you know, conspiracy person if you don't believe everything in the textbook. But I don't know. I like to think. Uh, I'm not saying, saying that I know any better. Uh, but I like to think through the things, even if um, even if I think I know I think I know the answer. I still like the process of like thinking through, and I'll do that with everything. I mean, even like a piece of software. I'll like, for example, I started using this Yolo box a couple of weeks ago. I'll still watch the baby introductory videos, and I do that with everything, like comic books, writing, um, I always like, I don't stop, I don't always move on to the next level, the next level, a lot of times I'll re-watch the early foundational stuff and see like if there's some perspective there, if there's something that I miss, not, not just something that I missed, but some perspective that I'll gain from understanding the core concepts deeper, uh, more deeply. You know, it's something I like to do. Uh, you may have other hobbies, other ways of learning, but that's something I like. Um, and as I say, I'll use it even with the most mundane stuff. For example, software that you know was just written by another human to be a tool, I'll still go back and try to understand it from that, you know, that basic perspective. So I can't not use that same tactic 
on the things that I learn in science class. It's like who I am. I have to look at things that way. So whether I, you know, will vote for that or whether I'll put it in an essay on the test or not, I don't know. But um, I like to think about them. I like to think about those things. Like whether they're true or not, I like to think about them. All right, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42. This is one of the two layers. We could start installing it if we wanted to. But let's try to get the other one first. So the other one is uh, 34, 35, 36. So we're missing 37 and 38. And then we could start building. So 37 and 38 should have numbers 137 and 138, right? So where are those? 139 is right here. 137 is here, but it's insane. Oh, it is insane. Um, look at 37. Look at that little thing at the bottom. Like, look at 36, look at 38, and then look at 37. There's something going on there. They don't really show it well in the picture, but you can see it here. 137. It's like, wow, they really disguised. <laughs> like, 137 should stick out like a sore thumb, but they somehow did a great job of disguising this piece. All right, so there it goes. There you go. Sticks out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at 137 there. And now look at 137 in the instructions. They did everything they could to like hide that 137. <laughs> and they weren't trying to hide it. It's supposed to be a helpful instruction booklet. Now imagine if they were trying to hide it, going back to some of the other topics we were talking about tonight. Yeah, I mean, some things are hidden when you're trying to reveal them. So if you're trying to hide them, maybe sometimes you accidentally um, reveal them. And then maybe other times you're on the mark and they're really hidden. And it's going to take a while to to unpack them. All right, so we're looking for 138, the piece 138. Um, so far, I don't see it. The pieces are kind of all over the place. Let's look down here. All right, I'm gonna go to the board. Uh, and by that, I mean the little highlighting of the board here, just in case it's on another page. No, I don't think so. Although we didn't use that circle piece yet. What's that for? All right, so where is 38? I'm just looking. Oh, it's right here, 138. I don't know how I missed that. Okay. So I was zoomed in on the instructions, and I saw that there were two pieces here, but I only had one of them out, so I looked, and the other one was 38. All right. So now we've got our pieces. We can start putting them in there. But as you recall, the first piece was really tough to get in. Now we got to do how many pieces? 15, we said. 3, 6, 7, 10, 11. No, that's only 14. Anyway, whatever. How did I decide that that was 15? No, it should be 15 because 134 through 138, that's 14. But those are numbers that we're using. It's not a subtraction, so the answer should be 15. I'm going to count them on the instructions. All right, 3, 6, 7, 10, 11. Yeah, it's 15. What am I, will I not chip one out yet? 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. 3, 4, 6, 8. All right. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. All right, that's three, six, seven. Yeah, that's 15. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I must have miscounted once. All right. So it's finally time to get started. I don't predict these are going to be easy to put in. But we're going to do it. All right. So I'm not sure. I'm still not sure what the pattern is. They only show for sure where two of them go. And that's uh, 41 and 48. So I put in 48 first. Now I'm putting in 41. And then after that, we're kind of on our own. Well, let me see. Are they saying like these? Uh, let me see. One, two, three. Four, five, six pieces go here. Three, six, yeah. And then these seven pieces go there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do two of them go in here? I tell you, it's weird. Uh, like, how do I know which ones go on top and which ones go on bottom? I guess the order. So if 48 goes here, then 47 has to go here. I also think the, the squares are a little bit different sizes. I don't know, maybe I'm not right about that, but they look like they're different sizes, don't they? Those squares, are they a little bit different sizes? I think so. All right. So 47, so this should be 47, right? Wow, uh, do I stop or do I keep pushing? Not sure. I think stop. All right, so I'm going to try to do these in order 45, 42, 43, 44. No, 46 should be next, which makes sense. Uh, there we go. You see, some of them have small gaps, and some of them have big gaps, and some of them have small gaps. That tells you whether they're on the top row or the bottom row. And by the way, that also confirms that they go in order because that's how they match up. So I guess that's the plan here. I just go in order. Let's finish this page at least tonight. Wow, I almost snapped this board. I got to be careful not to do that. I have 45. Wow. I have 45, 44. Hmm. Is that gonna go in or what? Um, so far it's not going in. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think we got it lined up. Wow. Well, uh, it's not going in. Probably needs to be sanded. All right. It went in. All right. Almost there. All right. So does this go in? I just pulled off this thing. Uh, I just fixed that on the back. All right. I just want to get a look. Yeah, yeah, I think it just goes in a little bit. So mostly it sticks out the back. I think I can go a little further. But I'm not sure. I don't want to break the piece. All right, I guess it doesn't go any further. And here's the last piece, 42. Oh, goodness. All right. Huh. All right. Should we start at the back? 
It's already there. Did we already put this here? Uh, no. Alright, 41. Let's just keep going. So 41 goes here. We need another question. I can't keep narrating. <laughs> but I'm putting in 42, 41, 40. It's going to get boring. Alright. How... Let me see here. The distance to put this at. Wow, this uh, camera one is completely blurry. How many people do you need in a room for there to be greater than 50% chance of two people having the same birthday, same month and day? I mean, I've heard this before. I know it's remarkably low. It might be like 19 or something like that. But let's see if we can figure out how to actually get to that number. So if you have two people in the room, then what are the odds they have the same birthday? I think I'm going to read the answer on this one because I know, I know the answer. I know it's low. It's like down in the teens. But off the top of my head, I'm not thinking of how to get the answer. Um, maybe I should think about it for a little bit, uh, before I give up, but anyway. Okay. I think I put this piece in the wrong place. Or maybe it skips. Does it go out of order? 37. Is that 37? Did I not pop out 37? Oh, there's 37. So, hmm. I got to slide this one down a little bit. I don't know how I'd manage that. Oh, that's 38. Okay. All right, so that's 38. All right, this one is 37. It's a crazy piece. It goes into two slots, and then it also hangs down. Yeah, 37 is a crazy piece. What can I tell you? Um, and it's going to take some force to get it in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many people... Do you need in a room for them to, for two of them to have the same birthday? For the odds are, for the odds being that two of them have the same birthday, not that they necessarily do have the same birthday. Does this 37 piece slide? It's like really unclear where to put it. There's going to be a gap here. 36, 35, 34. No, maybe not. Maybe no gap. Okay. All right. Two people having the same birthday. Let's start with two people in the room. So then what are the odds? I mean, is it 365 or not? Um... Wow, I'm just not on my game. Maybe because it's late at night. Let's just look at the answer. I, I'm sure that if I thought about it while I wasn't doing a puzzle and took like 10 minutes, I'd get it. But for now, let's just read the answer. Oh, it's 23. Okay. Only 23 people. Is this, gonna fo is this camera going to focus ever? Uh, I guess not. Only 23 people, even though there are 365. Man, this camera's not focusing. Only 23 people, even though there are 365 different possible birthdays. Check it out next time you're at a big party. So they didn't give the answer as to why. Um, I'm disappointed in that. Um, I want to know the answer why. I'm going to have to figure out the statistics. Anyway, 
We built this. Um, a couple of these pieces look like they could be pushed in further, but I don't want to make an assumption. All right. Uh, they do need to be pushed in further. If you look at this thing um, that we're that is building towards, this 43 is not sticking out like this. And neither is this 47. So it seems like they need to be pushed in. So let's give it a shot. I just broke a piece. I just broke like really important piece trying to push that in. Yeah, there's now nothing even to hold it in. And I didn't even push the piece in because it was the piece like next to it. Yeah, all right, so this is the piece that needs to be pushed in. And in the process of trying to push it in, I broke a really important piece. Um, but there's going to be some toothpicks involved at some point. So I assume we'll be able to get that back in. So let's just try to get this other piece in. And then we're just going to kind of hold that piece with the toothpicks in place until it, we get a chance to lock it in. So this piece is really not going. Though it's supposed to. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to have to pull it out and sand it. Or let's try this. Let's push it down in. It's not going. Oh, wow. It went in. Uh, didn't break anything either. Okay. That's 48, 47, 46. Now, where does this go? Here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be falling out until we put the toothpicks in. And what's worse about it falling out is that this piece is losing the tension. Like when it was there, when it was not falling out, it was creating tension that was keeping this piece in. I think we can get it in there because it kind of flaked a little bit. This camera one is, is blurry. It's a, it's a huge problem. Uh, I'm gonna have to switch these cameras. I don't know which camera. Can I make this camera one not blurry? It's so bad. I don't know. I've been using it for weeks. But now that I see that you can't read these cards with camera one, I, I was like thinking, is it blurry or do I just think it's blurry? But now that I see that you can't read the cards, I see that this camera one is blurry. So that's just like unacceptable. Uh, I don't know what to do about it. Is there like a button that makes it focus? Hold on a second while I play with camera one. Um, all right. Would it be under camera? Uh, lens, picture, WB, enhance. Uh, none of those mean anything to me. Uh, general, what does general mean? All right. I just want this thing to focus. Well, that's not right. Hmm. 
that's under system. I don't think that's going to help us. It's got to be on the camera, but there's nothing here. Lens? Let's see what's under lens. Focus mode auto. So this was supposed to be auto focusing, but it wasn't. Uh, I don't know what manual would do for us. There's only auto and manual, but it seems like it doesn't find the sensitive, high, mid, low. All right. Um, near a limit. I have to look up what that means. Digital zoom off. So you could turn on digital zoom. Focus zone bottom. I think that's where I usually am. All default top. So it wasn't um, it wasn't on default. It was on center. And I think I'm usually more at the bottom when I'm building. Um, but I don't want to assume that. Focus on all default. Let's just stick with default. All right. All right, let's see if we can read the card now. All right. It's supposed to autofocus. Oh. Uh. Hmm. Well, it definitely focused on the close one. I would say that this autofocus is not great. It works, but it doesn't work great. All right, let's just finish this page. We're almost there. So two more pieces, 150 and 149, they're gonna be held together by these two toothpicks. So we're up to 354. We need 150 and 149. 149 kind of looks like those pieces we've been dealing with a lot lately. With like that thing on the back of it. Kind of looks like this piece. And that piece does say 49 on it. And it looks a lot like it. But it doesn't say 149, it says 177. On the other side, there's a piece that does say 149 on it. This piece, 149. So I guess that's the piece, 149. And then we need 150, which you would assume would be not too far away from 149. Yeah, it's not right here, 50. Conveniently says 50 on it. All right, and they're going to be held together with toothpicks. All right, so we're putting the toothpicks. Basically, they're going to face this direction. That's how they're going to go. Toothpicks through them both. All right, so let's get the toothpicks in. went flying but I got it didn't leave the desk all right let's see if we can get this in there nope my goodness
Huh. What if I put this through here first? Is that going to help in any way? Let's see. You know, it kind of does, I think. I think it kind of helps. It just keeps it steady. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. All right, so now if I put it through, I can use that same principle to connect it to 149. All right, so we found a way to get toothpicks in. Put them through the tool first, and then into the uh, wherever their final destination is. Um, wow, too bad we only discovered that on day 15. All right, let's try that, see if that was luck or if it works again. All right, we put it in the tool. That does seem like it's working like a charm. Put it in the tool, line it up, push it in. All right, it's gotta go in through two blocks, so. All right, there we go, that's it. So that tool is definitely what you need to get the toothpicks in. Uh, we'd probably be twice as far if we'd thought of that earlier. All right, so this piece actually goes... I noticed that this end... By the way, if you notice, that piece is staying in. But I also noticed that this end piece was kind of extra. You know, so here's the here's the piece that's going to go on there. Um, but I think I'm doing it... Something seems backwards about it. Do we do this right? Yeah, yeah, this is right. Yeah, yeah, this is right. Uh, doesn't hurt to double check. So we double checked, determined it was right. Um, let's get that all the way on, hopefully without breaking anything. Yeah, I don't know about this focus on this camera. I wish it were a better camera, but it is what it is. All right, that's it for... Uh, for page 37, wait a second. We're, there's no way we're on page 37. So I like, you know, I think, did we skip a page? Wow, we skipped a page. We skipped two pages. What? No, we didn't skip any pages. They just happened to be the instructions. <laughs> the instructions just happened to look the same. On page 37 looks the same as page 34. This is like crazy. So here's page 34, which we just did. So we're moving on to page 35 tomorrow. But there's page 35, there's page 36. And then look at page 37. It looks like, it looks like page 34. I think it's the mirror image of page 34. Anyway, whatever it is, that's it. We did it. Uh, this is this is what we got until tomorrow. So come back tomorrow and we'll see more of the U Gears Dream Cabriolet being assembled. Day 16 tomorrow. See you tomorrow.